I feel like two of the biggest sticking points for people when it comes to their diet are breakfast and snacking. And funnily enough, the two are intricately linked. Let's be completely honest with each other. We've all been there eating one cashew on the couch whilst watching Vikings, and all of a sudden this one cashew slips into three or four or five or the whole freaking packet. Now, it might be that bad. It's organic, it's healthy, it's a whole food. However, I do like to make a point of not allowing food to own me. So here are some tips. Uh, but, but before we get into all the tips, let me just tell you my story to give you some context first. I got into the health game early on. Being called Kale, which yes, is the name I was given when I was born, you kind of had to get into the health game at some point. I mean, there's only so many times that people will tell you they ordered you for lunch, they mixed you with their eggs, or they fed you through their juicer. It's, it's, I kind of had no choice. The real reason I got into health though is because I was diagnosed with a heart condition called supraventricular tachycardia. That happened when I was 16 and from that point nothing was ever the same. I remember looking across at the doctor and he said we'll give you an ablation that would burn away a piece of my heart and I said that's illogical and he said that's the only option we've got. So I said well no I'm not that interested see you later. I was introduced to a holistic lifestyle, one of whole foods, some basic supplements, and basic habitual changes. I was able to reverse my condition and still manage it holistically to this day. I went from having these SVT episodes one to two times a week, back down to one to two times a month, and then it ended up being one to two times in a year, and now I can't actually remember the last time that I've had one. I didn't really realize before that point that everything that I put in my mouth had an impact. I had inadvertently created an environment that was conducive to developing the symptoms associated with SVT. And if I wanted to change that situation, I had to change the environment. And so I did. Now, let me talk about what my diet actually looks like now, and then we'll move on to the snacking side of things. In general, I eat a lot of veggies, mostly in the form of salads. I eat probably one to two salads every single day, plus a green drink of some kind. These killer veggies are one of the best foods for maintaining a healthy digestive system, which is why they make up such a big part of my diet. I also have some meat in there. Because I follow a balanced, relaxed nutritional protocol these days, somewhat Mediterranean inspired, I would say, it does mean that I have some meat in my fridge. And today it's some nice, clean, organic lamb. One thing that I also have in here, or just the general kitchen area, is fruit. I feel like fruit's been admonished these days because it contains a tiny little bit of sugar, which can be an issue if you live a really sedentary lifestyle, but for me, being active, it's not a problem at all. I try to go for anything that's in season, organic is also great, but I also keep some frozen berries, which are obviously not always in season. They're great for things like smoothies, desserts, and they contain a lot of good gut nourishing antioxidants as well. Okay, let's move on to the snacking segment of today's video. The number one mistake I see people make is having a high carbohydrate breakfast. By spiking your blood sugar early in the day with these, although somewhat healthy foods, you're gonna pay for it later when your body overcompensates by releasing a stack of insulin and sucking all that sugar into the cells, which results in you getting the classic 3.30 p.m.-itis coffee chocolate sugar crash. A much better breakfast, in my opinion, is something with a good amount of fat and protein. Having some fat and protein in the morning personally resulted in me feeling much more stable throughout the day. I tend to glide through 3.30 p.m. all the way through to six o'clock when it's time for dinner. And this is generally the strategy that I recommend for most people because having breakfast is generally gonna help them feel more safe, more secure, and in their routine. But that whole idea is predicated on the idea that you actually feel like having breakfast. Again, I started experimenting with intermittent fasting, but I've modified it a little. Let me tell you how. 
Instead of going completely without food in the morning, I have something very light and easy to digest, but that contains fat and protein. A warm bone broth seems to be a winner for me in terms of staving off hunger until lunch and not arriving there like a ravenous monster. I've also started experimenting with medicinal mushroom lattes too, and these seem to be equally as balancing first thing in the morning. I've started having a blend of raw cacao, maca, and some medicinal mushrooms like reishi, cordyceps, chaga, lion's mane, and a couple of others. And I'm finding it really tasty, really energizing, but most importantly for today's video, balancing. I think the balance part is really important because in terms of your blood sugar, when that gets low, you're pretty much programmed to eat anything. And again, I want to emphasize here that snacking itself is not really unhealthy. It's just associated with some unhealthier behaviors and increased caloric intake. So if you are a snacker, I wanted to point out some healthy options for you. Here they are. Keep savory snacks on hand just in case you feel like chewing on something. Carrot sticks, cucumber sticks all go really well with a good homemade guacamole. You won't regret it. Almonds are another saviour because they're not as binge worthy as something like cashews or macadamia nuts and do well to manage cravings. One thing that I was taught early on in my health journey was if you get hungry, have water first. I believe many of our hunger and thirst signals get confused, so checking the hydration box first is a calorically safe strategy. When I'm hungry, I'll most often get a glass of water and put a tiny pinch of quality sea salt or Himalayan salt into it, but not so much that you can taste it. This influx of minerals and trace elements, coupled with the hydration, seems to quell my hunger for at the very least 30 minutes, if not eliminate it altogether. Exercise is of course important, but so is being mentally stimulated. You know the old adage, are you really hungry or are you just bored? You can tie the two together by simply going for a long walk if you're not sure if you're hungry or bored. Uh, I call this being bungry. Going for a brisk walk gives you the added benefit of the exercise and if you couple it with some deep breathing, it's a really good mental health tool. Hey, I hope this video really helped you get control of your snacking habits or was just interesting to hear. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe now. You can also join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. And if you're interested in anything that I talked about today, head to kalebrock.com.au forward slash recommended and you'll find some links to various products there. I'll see you guys soon.